Hi, welcome back. Um, I just did my cleaning and stuff, so. Oh, KO33N. Oh, I almost forgot. I need to explain about fossil rocks kept in your case. This is... Please look at the top screen. Rocks with a new icon hold fossils of a type you have not yet successfully cleaned. Filled with point value contain fossils you have previously revived. This number, PT, is the highest point value you have achieved so far in a cleaning of that fossil. These numbers can help you decide which fossil rocks to keep and which to leave for others, Babu. How do you leave fossils for others? What others, anyway? Dr. Diggins. Ah, fuzzy. This vivisaur magnet machine, or VMM, holds your vivisaurs as medals for storage and organization. It can also be used to make teams, letting you match up to three vivisaurs to fight together. Lastly, this is where you select which team to carry around with you. Right then, fuzzy, let's get you up to speed with how to use a VMM. What you'll see, first of all, is the team slot screen. Team information will dis be displayed on the top screen. The slot with the star mark is the team you're currently carrying. The other two slots are reserved for other teams you want to make. Next, I'll show you how to select the resource to add to your team. This is the team formation screen. The touch screen is where you'll make all your selections. All you need to do to make a team is select a vivisaurus to move into the space at the top of the screen. You absolutely have to have a vivisaur in the red leftmost area. Tap OK in the bottom of the screen to finish editing your team. If you want to quit, you can also tap back to return to the team slot screen without making any changes. And that's how you use a VMM. Would you like to hear that again? If you have any revived vivisaurs, it might be a good idea to assign them to teams now. Oh, you should also know that there are usually VMMs at dig sites. They're just orange. Alrighty then, good luck to you, Fuzzy. I didn't actually say they're just orange. Just a piece of advice for anyone watching this. This is the new Vivisaur I got, it's called Chanchin. I don't usually tell that, but this is just in the very beginning of the game, so... Yeah. I probably shouldn't be doing this on screen, but... I'm just gonna name it. Oops. I named it Pi. Beginner. Shall we go to- So, are you ready to go to the trial dig site? Yes. Great, let's go. Move to show a person. That's a dude. Making a hole. Randomly. Don't walk away. There we go. Oh, hi, Fossil Fighter. Oh, hi there. You must be new. I'm Holt. Good to meet you. By the way, you've only fought one-on-one -on -one battles so far, right? 
well, not battles in plural, but yeah. Let me show you how to, let me show you the deal with two on two battles. All right, let me explain two on two battles. Let me start by explaining the red, blue, and green zones that Vivisaur stand on. The red one is the attack zone, AC. Vivisaur in the attack zone can attack Vivisaur in the opponent's attack or support zone. The blue zones are the support zones, SD. Vivisaur in, in the support zone can only attack Vivisaur in the opponent's attack zone. Also, support zone Vivisaur deal less damage than they would from the attack zone. On the other hand, your Vivisaur will take less damage when they're in the support zone. The green zone is the escape zone, easy. Vivisaur's move to the escape zone can't use skills, but they also don't take any damage. Hey, did you see what the Vivisaur's in the SC did just now? They use support effects. Support effects are extra effects that SD Vivisaur's perform automatically. Now, notice the arrow icons displayed over the attack zone Vivisaur's. An arrow pointing up means increased power, and an arrow pointing down means decreased power. This is the swap command icon, which can be used to move Vivisaurs between the zones. It moves an attack zone Vivisaur to the escape zone, and moves a support zone Vivisaur to the attack zone. Swapping doesn't use any FP. Try selecting the swap command. That's some good swapping right there. Vivisaurs move to the escape zone, or automatically move to an open support zone two turns later. That's about it for swapping. I'm going to wrap things up with something very important. Each Vivisaur can attack only one time per turn. Depending on how much FP you have left, you may be able to attack with a different Vivisaur. Also, whenever you lose a Vivisaur in battle, you get a big chunk of FP to help you fight back. This keeps things interesting, since knocking out a Vivisaur might set up its friends for a big attack. I bet you can tell this is going to be fun, can't you? One more thing, there'll be a few icons and arrows and such that you don't know. We'll cover those later. Alright, time to test out your skills. Don't think I'm gonna take it easy on you, rookie. Yeah, that's the spirit. Let's do it. Oh, but first I gotta tell you about the formation screen. For battle, you'll choose your Vivisaurs on the formation screen. On the top are your opponents, and on the bottom are your Vivisaurs. The red area is your attack zone, AZ. The, the Vivisaur there will be your main attacker, usually. The blue areas are your support zones, SD. Vivisaurs there can assist your AZ Vivisaur, usually. The green area is for your reserves. Vivisaurs there will set the current battle out. The, the Vivisaurs used in the battle, the only Vivisaurs used in battle are those in the AZ or SC. Vivisaurs in the reserves can't participate in battle, but they also can't get hurt there. Just be sure to always have Dino Metal set for the AZ and SC positions. Choose carefully, because once the battle starts, you can't swap out Vivisaurs. When you're all set, select ready to begin the battle. Oh, great, let's get started. I just like to do that. <laughs> 